The Lord's Prayer is a talk about much online. I want a play before every episode, and I'm not forcing any religion on anyone. Thank you, God. And now here's my mom and saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is Standing Strong. Let's chat with Waylon. Join Waylon as he interviews people around the world with a variety of topics surrounding everyday struggles and bringing trustworthy communication to his guest. It's time we have more positivity and kindness in the world. He has had family, friends, actors, fitness experts, and the legendary ring announcer of WWE, Lillian Garcia. He can't wait to bring more inspiring episodes your way. Welcome to Standing Strong. Let's chat with Waylon. Welcome to yet another episode of Standing Strong. As I am so excited to be bringing you another inspiring guest. Before we get started with the episode, I just want to say thank you for all the love and support. Don't let anyone define you because you only define yourself. Don't let anyone hold you back from chasing your dream because it all comes from you. You have to be mind strong and follow your heart no matter what. Be yourself and never give up. Your life is truly important and you're not alone. And now here's Steve with the introduction of the next guest. Amy O'Neill began auditioning for roles at the age of 10, first appearing at the age of 13 in an episode of Mama's Family in 1983, in which she played the younger version of Betty White's character. Amy continued to land guest spots on television shows such as Matt Houston in 1982, Night Court 1984, Highway to Heaven 1984, The Twilight Zone 1985, and Family Ties 1982, before winning a regular role on the 1986 season of the long-running soap opera The Young and the Restless. She made her feature film debut three years later in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, 1989. In the movie, her character Amy is shrunk by her scientist father, played by Rick Moranis. She reprised her role in the sequel, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, in 1992. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, she mainly continued to guest star on popular television shows such as Star Trek, The Next Generation, 1987, The Young Riders, 1989, and Murder, She Wrote, 1984, and also appearing in the biographical miniseries, I Know My First Name is Steven, 1989. She had roles in White Wolves, A Cry in the Wild 2, 1993, and Attack of the 5'2 Women, 1994, as well as the comedy pilot, Where's Rodney, 1990. It's Waylon's honor to welcome Amy O'Neill, best known from his favorite movie growing up, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, as his 63rd guest on Standing Strong. One is up, everyone, and welcome back to Standing Strong. This is the 63rd episode, and thank you so much, Steve, for the incredible introduction of our next guest. At this time, everyone, Standing Strong is about to get strong. Please welcome Amy O'Neill. Hi, What's well, up, Amy? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. I've been looking forward to doing your show for quite some time now. Yep. I'm so honored that you are officially on Standing Strong. At this time, can you let people know where they can find you on social media? Yes, you can find me on my Facebook page or my Instagram page. 
under Amy O'Neill Official. All right, there you go, everyone. Get connected with Amy. Now at this time, Amy, did you know right away that acting was something you want to do in life? I did for as long as I can remember. Um, when I was little, my dad, who was a carpenter, he had a hobby of making Super 8 movies. He had a Super 8 movie camera when that was like the highest tech thing you could do. And um, so he used to make little movies. I have three brothers and a sister. So we were always going on road trips or driving around for the day or whatever. And my dad would make movies with the Super 8 movie camera. So as far back as I can see as well from before I can even remember, I was always kind of a ham and loved to make people laugh, get my dad to go get us ice cream. Also one of those old movies where it was around Christmas time and I think I was playing with my sister and a friend of hers and we were doing a, like a little piece about like the Virgin Mary and we, we were singing the little drummer boy and somebody started like getting distracted and doing something else. And I was so serious when I was so little, I was like, what? Like we're making this presentation, you know? So I think there's something about pageantry and uh, communicating in that way. That's always been really exciting to me. Like for all of my life, when I go to see a parade, I love parades. Mm -hmm. But there's something that happens to me emotionally of watching people walking down the street or riding in the car in their neighborhood saying like, I'm here. Hey, everybody, we're all here together. That's like so um, it wells up my emotion inside. I, I love pageantry and films. I love watching movies. It's been such a big, important part of my life. I feel like I've learned so much from watching some of these stories and the way that they're told with all the beautiful colors and the music. And so, yeah, I, I think I've always wanted to do it. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Now, how did you get through the struggles and hardships in your life as an actress and growing up? That's a great question, Waylon. I feel really fortunate that when I was young, my mom got me into some acting classes that were really, really good and supportive. And part of the thing that I loved in the acting classes when I was little was we'd always start with like a meditation and the teacher, Diane Hardin, she wouldn't call it a meditation. But that's basically what it was. She'd kind of guide us through like a relaxation of our bodies and imagining, you know, like relaxing all the different parts, imagining like warm sand coming in through your tiptoes and then imagining it coming through your whole body and then your body filling with light. So that every time at the beginning of acting class, it was like you got to relax from the day and shed all of the things that you had been thinking about before you came into class. And so you'd be able to start creating from like a really relaxed state of mind where you're really in touch with yourself and your feelings. And I think that I used that. I was also um, a competitive ice skater when I was young. I was very athletic and loved ice skating. And a lot of sports, coaches use that visualization technique also to help like instead of thinking of things that could go wrong during your competition you imagine you go through it and you imagine everything going beautifully to the best that it ever could so i think that when i was young i learned how to focus my attention in a way that serves me you know in a way that helps empower me uh huh. Yeah. I love that. During any point of your life experience, did bullying ever play a factor? Maybe it did in a way, but in kind of a, an odd way. 
in the sense that like after Honey, I Shrunk the Kids came out and that was like the main thing. The Young and the Restless, the soap opera that I did was soap operas were really popular back then. So that I got a lot of recognition for as well. But I had thought when I was little, I had thought, I think because I adored the actors that I saw on screen and I cherished them, I had thought that if I got into a movie that I would feel that coming from other people. And I did from a lot of people, a lot of really supportive people. But, you know, I also grew up with the internet kind of just starting and the communication on that I'd see on my IMDB page, for instance, there used to be like feedback or comments from anybody that would want to write on it. And I find that a lot of a lot of people back then who wanted to write on it were maybe bullies because they would write things that were that maybe they thought that they were funny, but uh, if yeah, it felt it was hard to accept, you know, it was so different than what I had thought would happen from the movie. And I, I know that there are a lot of entertainers who say, don't read your reviews, don't read the good ones or the bad ones. Right. And, but it's hard, you know, it stings. And so, yeah, I don't, I, I think that things have changed a little bit where I don't really get that kind of attention, that negative kind of antagonizing, bullying kind of attention so much anymore, which I am really grateful for. Now, Amy, I loved Honey, I Shrunk the Kids growing that up. <laughs> and to this day, I still watch it. I have to know, how was it like for you? And how does it make you feel that people still enjoy it today? I love it. You know, for... I saw on your introduction when you said it was your favorite movie growing up. And it make, makes me so happy, you know, because I remember my favorite movies when I was growing up, like The Goonies, you know, some of those movies, it's a special thing, you know, it feels like such an intimate thing because you get to watch these characters go through all kinds of situations. And so, yeah, to, to hear that it was your favorite movie made me feel really good and really happy that I'm on your show. I think for a while, you know, when Honey, I Shrunk the Kids first came out, I think it maybe was a little bit overwhelming. Like it wasn't, you know, I think sometimes people think, oh, if I was a rock star, I would have everything that I'd ever want, you know? And I used to think if I got a part in a movie like that, I wouldn't feel lonely ever, or I wouldn't feel insecure ever, or, you know, some of that stuff. And then when the movie came out, it was, it was so exciting, but it was also a little bit scary. I acted for a little while after that, but then when I was in my early twenties, I realized that I kind of didn't want all that attention because the attention was sometimes it was really good, but sometimes it was bad. And it kind of felt like being under a microscope like Rick Moranis in the mm -hmm. pictures for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. So I felt like I, I wanted to do other stuff. So I got back into like sports and athletics and got involved in different kinds of entertaining and different kinds of performing that felt more comfortable for me at the time. Right. And I also paint. So I, for like, there have been periods of my time where mostly what I was doing was painting and drawing. Yeah, I loved Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I think it was an awesome movie and I still enjoy it. And I think it, it has to be one of my top five favorite movies. What are the other ones? Um, I loved the Even Steven movie. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I love Jumanji, The Pacifier, and Any Million Dollar Cook-Up. Cool. You know what that tells me? Because some of those movies were kind of after, you know, they were a generation later. But it, 
it make the thing that makes me so happy like this past year i've gotten involved in doing more like appearance shows and meeting fans and for whatever reason i don't know why i uh, i didn't do it for so long but getting to meet the people who honey i shrunk the kids was really important to has been so warming to me you know it's like it's been so exciting because for at the beginning I would get mail, you know, and that's so different than actually getting to meet people and to getting, getting to see who they are more. And so, yeah, it's really meaningful to me to have gotten to take part in a movie that means that much to so many people. Yep, absolutely. Oh, Vine, everyone. We will be right back with Standing Sean. We will be right back with Standing Strong. Let's chat with Waylon after this break. Thank you so much for making it this far into the episode and for all the love and support. I'm able to have trustworthy communication with my guests and give them the opportunity to ask me questions. Check out some incredible podcasts that Waylon suggests, and the links will be in the description box. Culture Shocked, a podcast based on gaming, movies, and TV shows. It's a one-of-a-kind podcast. Tyler's Takedowns, a wrestling podcast on the SJP World Media Network that discusses classic and modern-day professional wrestling. God TV, an amazing podcast run by SoCal Val, Lisa Marie Varon, and Mickey James. WrestleManiacs with Waylon and Tyler, a weekly wrestling show regarding breaking down WWE news. Now, Waylon would like for you to check out some other amazing people, and their links will be in the description. Catherine Norland. She's an inspirational person who does Sunday Lives on her YouTube channel and talks greatly about God, our Father. Rainy Vacation, a small music group from Northwestern Pennsylvania created by Sean and Nathan. Knox Films, a production company run by actor Richard Ryan. He's an amazing guy, and some of his hit movies were Art of Deception, Fortune 500 Man, and natural demise. Richard has been working hard and will be bringing out more, including new music of his own. Visit www.oxfilms.us and follow him on Instagram at Richard Ryan 7. Once again, Oxfilms, check it out and watch the films on his website. Ace Higher, and a musician, a musician and content creator named Austin Sire. Austin does amazing content and music. He's a very talented person, and Waylon loves his work. Follow the show on Sosa Mania. On Facebook, Waylon Myers Podcast. On Instagram, Waylon Myers Podcast. On TikTok. Waylon Myers Podcast. And on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash Waylon Myers. Thank you, Tyler, for being back on Standing Strong in a different way. And now back to the episode and we are back with the 60 phone episode of standing strong amy how are you like can being on standing strong so far i love it waylon i'm a fan of yours i appreciate your show and how open you are and i'm really happy to be here thank you so much that means a lot to me you have played and a lot of other TV shows, such as Mama's Family, Highway to Heaven, The Twilight Zone, 
family ties and more. What was your favorite moments of these? And would you do it all over again? Oh, that's a hard question. My favorite moment of all of these. Well, Mama's Family was the first TV show that I booked, that I, got, I won the part. And that was a huge big deal to me because Carol Burnett was in it, Harvey Corman was in it, Vicki Lawrence was in it. These were people that I grew up watching on the Carol Burnett show. And I thought they were like the height of comedy. They made me laugh so hard. So when I got to be directed by Harvey Corman and work with them, that was like a dream to me. And it was also the first time that I did uh, TV show taped in front of a live studio audience. So it was kind of like a cross between being on stage and being on film. That was like a dream to me. But then the other thing is when I did the episode of Family Ties and I got to meet Michael J. Fox, who I admired. And he was so nice and so warm and supportive and encouraging. Uh, I'll never forget the hug. He was wearing one of those down vests and he gave me a big hug before we shot. That was in front of a live studio audience as well. Amazing. Yeah, it was wonderful. What words of encouragement would you give a feature actress or actor who wants to make it in the acting world? It depends how old the person is. But I remember I was in a really good acting class as an adult with this uh, actor named John Len. And he told me, Amy, you need more life experience. And I thought, well, how am I, how am I supposed to do that in an acting class? You know, how am I supposed to go get some more life experience? And I, I think that that was a, a wonderful thing that he told me because I did do other things. I traveled, I lived in another country, I got involved in different kinds of things. And so I feel like it really enriched my life. But I'm sure that's not what advice like a young person getting into acting would want to hear. Um, probably my advice would be to find supportive people who are living healthy, happy lives and try and become a part of that community and have fun going to acting classes because some of the thing about acting classes when I was little, it, it was amazing to learn how to use my imagination and how to communicate that and how to, sh to be available to show to share those emotions with people or the camera or whatever. But the other thing about acting class is I got to watch all of these incredible young Hollywood actors doing complex scenes in class. And some of them I'll never forget some, some of the work that those kids did in acting class. So it was such an enriching experience. So I'd say like find an acting class where you feel supported and you're allowed to be yourself. And because that's a big part of what you share when you're acting. There are ways to use things that you learn as an actor in all different areas of your life, even if they're not performing, even if they're just connecting with people. So I'd say my advice to a young person is, um, Find a class where you feel supported and where you want to explore. It's hard now too, because when I was in acting class, nobody had cell phones. There was no home computers. And, you know, so now I've found, like, I also have um, been working in circus arts for many, many years. And so oftentimes if there's a clown teacher who comes to town i will take their class and see what they've see what they've got to offer and i find that more and more the 
the environment of these classes has changed because so many people want to be taking pictures during the class and posting it on social media or taking videos and and it's become so much about promoting the classes that that space of of the secure safe space of privacy where you're allowed to explore and try things that might not work and stuff like that is harder to find but that being said i would say if, if for a young actor to yeah try and find a class wherever and start doing it right grain of vice 100 percent. now you. you're welcome now what keeps you grounded in your normal life and acting career what keeps me grounded i do a lot of things that keep me grounded i think partly because especially when i was younger i was kind of a thrill seeker i liked to do things that gave me a big adrenaline rush like juggling swords or juggling fire or whatever and maybe it comes from having been an ice skater and like jumping and spinning around in the air as many times as you can or i've been drawn to find ways that keep me grounded and a lot of them are really important to me like um when i was younger i learned tai chi which is like a eastern moving meditation and learning how to be aware of the energy in your body and how to work with it and so i i still do that i love tai chi and qigong and i also got really into meditation which at first i kept you know i and i think like sitting meditation when i was a kid i learned like a laying down meditation that had a, a lot to do with vis visualization but as an adult i learned more classic kinds of meditation and at first i thought how could somebody sit there for so long like my body would just get achy but then i started studying it more and i learned why people sometimes will go into a cave and meditate for a long time because it can feel really amazing and i feel like i i got to know parts of my body and my experience here on earth with everybody in a different light a different way and so yeah, I would do these like 10 day silent meditation retreats. And that may sound like a long time to not talk, but it was some of my favorite, you know, I'm so glad that I gave myself that opportunity to try it because it certainly was worth 10 days. Right. Like there are other ways that I stay grounded. Like I love racket sports that really get me in my body where all my attention is on watching that ball and getting it whether it's tennis or ping pong or paddle tennis um i i love doing that i love like going for hikes and being in nature that really helps keep me grounded that was okay. a good question thank you thank you now amy is there an inspirational quote that sticks to you and being true to yourself Yes, there are so many. Um, one that has empowered me in a way is take what you like and leave the rest. Because that helps me, it helps me remember that I have a choice in how much power I give things that are out of my control. But that's one that I really like take what you like and leave the rest. Meaning if somebody's behavior I don't like, I don't have to try and change them. I don't have to engage with them. I can just leave it alone and let them go about their business and uh, move on and uh, keep my eyes on the prize. And, you know, follow, follow my dreams. Right, 100%. So now back to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. What was your favorite scene to have filmed? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. Because, you know, we were filming for five months. So because of all the special effects, things kind of went slower than they normally would in a movie um, because there was so much that needed to be set up. And I think maybe... Maybe my favorite scene was 
when the lawnmower came and we were in the wormhole and the three boys get start getting sucked out of the wormhole and they're holding on to each other's feet and then I hold on to Nikki's feet and then I catch my foot on a little root or something that was really fun to film the fans that we used were humongous like they were enormous these fans to make that much wind that was really fun um i i also really loved like the part where cork this is a spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen the movie the part where cork takes us back to the house and we got to cling on to his fur of his beard. Um, that was really fun to film. I, I liked getting suspended. And we got to do a lot of getting suspended in this movie. You know, where you're held up, but you have to look like you're holding on for dear life. That, mm -hmm. was, that was really fun. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, those were some awesome scenes for so. Yeah, and the bee scene where Nikki and the other boy was on the bee and Nikki was allergic to pollen. That was a good scene too. Yeah. But yeah, now there was a TV series on Disney Channel in 1997 of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Did you watch that? And what was your takes on it? Well, I did not watch it up until recently. Part of the reason I didn't watch it is because I didn't have like cable or TV for a while. I was more into like reading or getting, uh, watching movies on DVDs and stuff like that. But recently I did watch it because I was making a DVD with Jerry Cornell of Theme Parkology. He had asked me to make a, a, a piece on Amy Zielinski. And so we made this DVD and I realized I know my part of Amy Zielinski, but I should know some of the other parts because there was another actress that played Amy Zielinski in the TV show. So I watched some of it and I thought it was so good. I love Peter Scolari. I have since I, since I was a little kid. And if they couldn't get Rick Moranis, that was an awesome choice. And uh, yeah, I thought it was really inventive and fun. So I'm glad that I, I'm glad I checked it out. That's awesome, that's awesome, yes. I watched that series when I was growing up and I found it was great. I'm like, too bad the original cast was it in that TV series. That would have been fun too. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, well everyone, at this time, when we come back from this small clip, Amy has the microphone. And now let's get fired up, as it's time for Waylon's guest to ask him the question. All right, let's see. Um, Waylon, what inspired you? to be so courageous and share yourself with all of these viewers all over the world? Um, what inspired me was Lillian Garcia's always be yourself and trust that it's enough. There was something about that quote that clicked with me to open my eyes and like, it doesn't matter if I have a speech and a speech impediment, then I should always be real to myself. Not everyone is going to watch your content. Not everyone's gonna click the like or the thumbs up. So I'm like, if I can share my struggles of how it was for me growing up to other people, then that's my purpose in life. It's just seeing all these inspiring celebrities and doll man pouring out veneers about life. It just, it, 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 it inspired me to want to be a part of that. 
I'm not able to be a big time famous YouTube host with this talk show. I just want to let people know that they are worth it in life and that they are not alone. If I can do that and I can change at least one person's life, then that means a lot to me. That's so beautiful, Waylon. You know, when I uh, have watched your show in the past and like, it's, it's such an inspiring viewpoint, you know, just to everybody be in it together. I really appreciate you making the show. Thank you. Means a lot to me. Are there any quotes that you can think of that speak to you that like your favorite quote that makes you feel good? Um probably the um it's it, I don't know how it goes, but don't be boldly into silence. Don't let yourself become a victim. Define no one but yourself, or however it goes. That was wow. one that inspired me. Wow, powerful. I love it. What's your favorite thing to do when you have a day off and you're not working on your show? What do you like to do? Um, I like to go outside, enjoy the fresh air, have cookouts, go to the lake, listen to inspirational music, and I love playing with my dog, Tenny. He is a shizu. So that's Aww. what I love to do. Very cool. Yep. And what was your favorite part in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Um, my favorite part of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids has got to be when Claude took you guys back to the house. Nikki got into the bowl of chairs. The dad was going to eat him, but Kurt bent his leg, and then he finally seen you guys, and then they shrunk you guys from being little back to your normal size. So that was my favorite part of the movie. Very and then cool. I can't forget about the ant. The ant was you guys' friend. And then the giant cookie in the yard that you guys ate. Yeah. So, you know, there's just so much that I love about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It, it will always be one of my favorites. Well, I'm so glad that we connected, Waylon, and thank you for asking me to come on your show. Yep. All right, everyone. Before we wrap up this interview, Amy, is there anything you would like to say to the viewers? One last message. I'd say we can all take uh, we can all take a cue from Waylon and find something that we want to do and take steps towards doing it and stay strong. Thank you. Right? I 100% agree. Stay strong. Don't ever let anyone define you because you only define yourself in life. Now, Amy, thank you so much for being my 63rd guest on Staying Strong. Until the 64th episode, I will catch you all next time.